Welcome. Let me talk a very, about a very basic feature in graphing functions. Often we ask students, you know, given a sketch of a graph y equals f of x, can you then from that sketch draw a graph of something like y equals f of x minus 3, or y equals f of x plus 5, or modifying the outputs y equals f of x plus 5, that overall plus 4. We try to uh, often instill upon our kids that these correspond to translations, left translation, translations to the left, translations to the right, up and down and so forth. I can never get it straight in my mind whether x minus 3, say in this first example, corresponds to a translation to the left or to the right, yet alone f of x plus 5. I don't even think of those terms. So what I'd like to do in this video is address another way of dealing with graphing functions like f of x minus 3 or f of x plus 5 without thinking in terms of left or right translations. Here goes. Uh, to really get this going, I need an actual example of a graph of a function y equals f of x. So let me just make something up right now. Suppose I had a graph that did something like uh, comes swooping down on some great big arc, and then one unit over, it levels off. So at zero, it dips down to a vertex, so the, some sort of like parabolic type thing, and one unit over, it levels off. Let's make this y equals f of x. And suppose I were then, from that, asked to graph y equals f of x minus 3. Well, I ask myself, what are we doing here? We're actually modifying the inputs. The inputs are no longer just x, they're now x minus 3. Now, our original graph does something very interesting at 0. So I'm going to ask, what input is now behaving like 0 for the x's? Well, obviously, I've put in x equals 3. I'm getting f of 3 minus 3, f of 0. So I could say that 3 is the new 0 for this graph, which means whatever the graph was doing at 0, it's now doing it instead at 3. Well, right then and there, I know the graph must be coming in, swooping down, have a vertex at 3, and then one unit over, leveling off. It must be occurring at 4. That's it. There's the graph. I guess that does correspond to a translation to the right, but I don't even think of those terms. I ask instead, what number is the new 0 for the x's? In this case, 3 is. Which means doing the second problem, y equals f of x plus 5, I'll do this one in green if I was to sketch that, all I need to ask myself was, OK, what's the new 0 for the x's? Well, negative 5 is obviously the new 0 for the x's. So what the graph was doing at 0 before, it's now doing at negative 5. That must swoop down and bend up, and one unit over, go to the right. So it must be at negative 4. That's it. There's the graph of y equals f of x plus 5. In this third example, let me get a different color. This border is going to be a mess, and it's already messy. I'm actually doing two things here. I'm taking the graph y equals f of x plus 5, and to each of the outputs, I'm adding 4 units. That is, I take all the, the, all the uh, outputs I had before and make them 4 higher. Uh, you know, with kids, I'd go through some, some process here, but it's fairly straightforward. That means I've got the graph I had before in green, but now everything has shifted 4 units higher. So this 0 now is 4 units higher. This leveling off is 4 units higher. Everything's happening 4 units higher. I must have a graph like that. So there it is. There's the graph of y equals f of x plus 5 plus 4. I haven't even thought about left or right translations. I guess I did think about vertical translation there. However, if you wanted to, this is an option. I actually, I leave it like this personally. But you can tie all this together and rewrite this equation as y minus 4 equals f of x plus 5. Now I can ask myself, OK, am I modifying the x, in, x inputs? Yes, I am. They're modified this way. What's the new 0 for the x's? I guess negative 5 is clearly the new 0 for the x's. Am I modifying the outputs y's? Yes, I am. What's the new 0 for the y's? 4 is the new 0 for the y's. So whatever's happening at height 0 before for the y's is now happening at height 4. Great. So here it is. Here's the new zeros for the x's, negative 5. Whatever is happening at height 0 before for the y's is now happening at height 4. Here it is. There's my graph, all happening at height 4 instead, with negative 5 being my new 0 for the x's. So some people do prefer, actually, to think of what's the new 0 for the y's, what's the new 0 for the x's, and do it that way. I tend to just say what's the new 0 for the x's, and then think about adding 4 to the outputs. It's just a matter of style there. All right, that's it. Of course, uh, more complicated functions, y equals f of 2x minus 3 plus 7 and so forth, and put a 9 on front, need a little bit more analysis but then we get into scaling. That's worth another video. So basic transformation of graphs via scaling and dilation and so forth, I guess is the next one I'll do. All right, thanks so much.